So you're thinking about moving to Boston? Well, wait just a moment. It may not be all that it's cracked up to be. It's hard to believe, but there are some negatives to this world-class city, especially if you're coming from an area that's not as um, prestigious. We'll go with prestigious. Take it from me, as I was not born and raised here. There's a little bit of a culture shock. So I want you to know some of the negatives of our fair city ahead of time. This way, you'll be well prepared. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand homes and I'm one of the top real estate agents in the state of Massachusetts. If you have any real estate questions, then I look forward to being the resource for your answers. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna be covering some of the most negative items about moving to Boston. And I'll tell you what, there are some really, really, really great ones here. But we're going to, of course, start off with weather. You say you're from Boston to someone in pretty much any area that is south of us, and they look at you with a puppy dog, sorrowful eye, saying something along the lines of, oh, it's cold up there. See, we have these things called the seasons in Boston. We get them all. We get spring, summer, fall, and yes, we get winter. There are some days that you're gonna wake up and leave the house in a jacket to only be wishing you had shorts on by the afternoon and then to be complaining about how cold it is by dinner time. But then there are the days that are just pure perfection. It's New England. Yes, we get snow. No, it's not as much as you probably think. It's true, some years are worse than others. Personally, I like the snow, not the 10 feet of snow, and I can't stand the one inch snowstorms, but it's pretty and it's fun. Plus, without experience of the bad, can you really appreciate the good? Maybe that's why our summers are so darn awesome. Expense, Boston is not cheap, it's true, but is any world-class city affordable? I remember moving from New York City to Boston and thinking, wow, what a great value Boston is. It really is all relative because if I had come straight from where I grew up, which is in Delaware, to Boston, then I think I might have had a little bit of a minor heart attack. As a whole, we're definitely more expensive, but there are areas that offer people more affordability than others. It's like everything else in life. If you want the best, well, then it's gonna cost you. You don't walk into a Ferrari dealership expecting to pay four prices. And yes, I'm saying that Boston is the Ferrari of a city, especially compared to that second-rate city located just a little south of us, the something Apple, anyway. Density, being able to stretch out may not be that easy in Boston. However, some neighborhoods may be easier than others. Boston has a density of 13,841 people per square mile. Greater Boston is the fourth most densely populated region in the US after New York metro area, Los Angeles metro area, and South Florida metro area. But when it comes to the actual population of Boston, it's not as big as most people think. The population of Boston is about 700,000 people as the city itself, it's only 48 square miles. Now, some neighborhoods like West Roxbury, they're gonna be far less dense than compared to some of Boston's most dense neighborhoods like Austin and Brighton. Traffic. Boston traffic is bad enough to make a grown man cry. Daily. In 2020, we were blessed with the worst traffic in the US title, again. Drivers in Boston lost 149 hours in 2019 due to traffic congestion. And if I hated myself, then I might just start keep tracking of this stat for myself, but I'm not. Then COVID happened, and now traffic is back. But the patterns, well, they've changed a little bit. Traffic's back to the 2019 levels, but it, it seems that it's improved in some areas with some commute times improving. Because I think people might not necessarily be working that traditional nine to five, but to speak very frankly here, even with the improvements, it still sucks. 93 is one of the worst roads in America. And whether you're going north or south, it's gonna get you. And the mass bike, it's no dream either, which leads to mass transit as an option. But don't get so excited about mass transit because it's on this list as well. Driving and parking. For those that are thinking that this is one and the same as traffic and that I'm beating a dead horse, oh no. Patience is more than a virtue if you're driving in Boston. You want to drive Boston without a GPS? Forget about it. Cities that work in grids, they make a lot of sense. Boston doesn't work in a grid. Then there are the constant detours just to screw with you some more. Then on top of it, Boston's decided to get rid of a lot of driving lanes throughout the city in order to give bikers their own special riding lane. 
This preference to bikers has only, well, quite frankly, made traffic worse and decreased the amount of parking. And oh yes, parking, it's cutthroat. Quick story, I'm not originally from around here. My first house was in East Boston, awesome spot. I loved it there. I got home around one or two AM, about a week and a half after a snowstorm. There was no parking except for a marked spot. Now this spot was marked with a cinder block and a two by four, that's all. It had been there for over a week and a half since that storm had happened. I moved them and then woke up with that cinder block thrown on the hood of my car. Parking, it's cutthroat. Some neighborhoods, well, they're worth, worse than others, but it's a city and parking's a premium. Mass transportation. I've already talked about how traffic sucks, so that must mean that our mass transit si system is really awesome in our city, right? How do I describe Boston's mass transit? It's like a drunk guy took some of his kids' crayons and started drawing some lines in different colors on a map of Boston. A red line, a green line, an orange line, a blue line, and a purple line to be exact. So let's start with that purple line. This is the commuter rail. Now, I know what you're thinking. There must be a central spot where the lines in the north and the south and the west, they, they all come together. And that you could maybe ride a train from the northern part of this state all the way to the southern part of the state. Well, that would make a lot of sense. And because it makes sense, well, then that means that's not the case. The north commuter lines arrive into Boston at North Station. Meanwhile, the west and southern Amtrak lines meet up at South Station. Now let's move to the oldest subway in North America. That would be the Green Line. <laughs> this is the line where that drunk guy, he really found his creative streak. The Green Line breaks off at the Copley stop with the E line going one way and then the B, C and D line going straight out towards the west. Then at the Kenmore stop, the B, C and D line goes their separate ways throughout Boston and through Brookline. They are currently extending the Green Line through Somerville and no, that is not the A line. It's an extension of the E line. Now the red line goes from Cambridge through Boston down to Braintree, while the orange line goes from Roslindale up through Malden. Then there's the blue line that starts in Beacon Hill and goes up through Revere. Oh yeah, then there's the silver line. Sorry, I, I kind of consider this a, a joke of a line because it's a bus. There are buses all throughout Boston, so I still don't get it. But the silver line goes throughout Roxbury, Seaport District, the airport, and then goes up to Chelsea. But it's a bus. It's okay to be confused. I'm pretty sure that's all by design. Taxes, welcome to Taxachusetts. I actually think this one's a little unfair. I think it's really Fiatusets with a little bit higher of a tax rate thrown into the mix. This negative really doesn't fall on the city though because Boston, they're actually pretty reasonable when it comes to taxes. There's no separate city tax like they have in New York City. And I have to say that their property tax is actually pretty reasonable. Reputation for unfriendliness. Recently, Business Insider ranked Boston as the fifth rudest city in the nation. And I think Bostonians would be pretty insulted at this ranking. We actually strive to be first at everything we do. And it seems that New York, LA, Washington, DC, and Chicago beat us out. Chicago, really? At the end of the day, 14.9% of respondents said Boston. I mean, we have aggressive driving, we have bad traffic, we'll go to fist over a parking space, and we have a rabid sports fandom that we will shortly talk about. Now, a Bostonian, they're not afraid to hold back and tell it like it is. Someone who's accustomed to maybe being a keyboard warrior could find a different fate here in the Bay State. Now, what many in the nation don't understand is that when you call us a mass hole, the typical born and bred will say, hell yeah. Actually, they're not gonna say hell. I'm just trying to keep this PG-13. But I will tell you this, the buttoned up culture begins to grow on you. Then all of a sudden, you're gonna find yourself dropping a wicket in a sentence, and before you know it, you're gonna call a sub a hoagie and the shoulder a breakdown lane. And for the record, it's not about being unfriendly, it's about being reserved. But in the end, we all have a certain love and are diehard for one another. I will say this though, people not holding the door for one another, still to this day, it drives me up the wall. Very neighborhoody. Boston, it's a city, but there are a lot of neighborhoods that make up that city. I actually did a video breaking down all the neighborhoods, which I'm gonna have at the end of this video. It's definitely worth a watch if you're not familiar with the neighborhoods. But the neighborhoody statue can get really annoying, but it's also really great. There are those that seem to never make it out of their neighborhood, as many have all that they need just right there. 
But the best part is that there is literally a neighborhood for everyone. And some neighborhoods, well, they're more pigeonholed than others. An example, Austin and Brighton are known for the college folk. Southie used to be known for the Irish section in town, but has really been taken over by the young professionals. The locals call them yuppies. The South End used to have a big gay community, but that community is starting to migrate over to Dorchester. And at this point, I don't actually know if you can really find any Italians living in the North End. It's just their food. It's not about the neighborhood, though. It's about you. What is important to you? Because at the end of the day, I promise you that you're going to be able to find your little enclave, and most likely, you may just begin to love that neighborhoody feeling. Love their sports teams. This one is great. If you happen to love the same sports teams, if you love the Pats, the Bruins, the Celtics, and the Sox, then you're going to make a lot of friends here real fast. If you have any other allegiance to another what they would consider sub-tiered sports team, then Bostonians might just look at you a little bit more cautiously from the onset. I can remember many years ago someone actually pelting me with a snowball as I was walking away from the bar with my hometown jersey on. We were in the Super Bowl playing the so-called, or playing the Patriots. Now that buddy of mine looked back and then he quickly recommended that I don't look back and I just keep on going. That's Boston. Here's the thing though. This has really been toned down a lot in the last couple decades because Boston's, they refer to themselves in their city as title town. And it has been a pretty, pretty incredible couple decades here. With all the good times, they've become a lot more tamer. And in their defense, the curse of the Bambino was not an easy 86 years for these fans. But if you love passion, if you love being around a diehard culture, then you're gonna love Boston. No happy hour and lackluster nightlife. I spent a couple years working for an investment bank in New York City and then moved to Boston. I got a taste for both social scenes at the time of my life that my liver, it was uh, more in shape, if you will. I remember us leaving our apartment at, at 11 p.m. in New York City to go to the bars because, well, they closed at 4 a.m. In Boston, bars either close at 1 or 2 a.m. And as I've gotten older, I, I can say with certainty that nothing good ever happens after 2 a.m. But now as an old man, Boston really wins out here. But the cover charges and lines drove me up the wall in Boston. I don't ever remember standing in line or paying a cover charge to get in a bar in New York City. And sidebar, the cover charges always drove me up the wall because I mean, I'm paying to go into a place in order just to pay more. I just never got it. But for the most part, Boston, they're not known for their nightlife. But I can tell you with certainty and experience that it's better than Delaware. So depending on where you're coming from, eh, all things are relative. Schools. Massachusetts is considered to have the best public school system in the country. However, the Boston school system as a whole is not considered as one of the best. And I say as a whole because Boston does have a couple schools that do achieve high national standings. For example, Boston Latin School actually ranks number 26 in the nation. It is also the oldest public school in the United States. Currently, they have redone how kids are admitted into this top school. 20% of an incoming class is accepted based on top grades, and the other 80% are based on grades and zip codes with students from zip codes and lower income communities actually receiving preferential treatment. Now, as a whole, the Boston school system enrolls nearly 50,000 students in grades from pre-kindergarten through 12th grade. They have a student to teacher ratio of 10 to one with a graduation rate of 73%. Now, according to publicschoolreview.com, the district ranks in the bottom 50%. Their math proficiency is 35% compared to a Massachusetts public school average of 51% while their reading proficiency score is 37% compared to the Massachusetts average of 54%. And that is a wrap on what I consider the biggest downsides of moving to Boston. It's really important to remember that just like any place, there's always going to be some negatives. Yes, these are the negatives that I can see in Boston, but when you start adding in all of the positives that we have to offer, then you're gonna quickly see it really quickly balance out, and then you're gonna see the positives take the lead. Boston, it's an incredible place to live. I've lived in many places in my life, and Boston by far has been the best. It's a city that acts like a town. It can be as big or as small as you like. Now, many of the things I just talked about is pretty much city life no matter what city you live in. If the city isn't for you, then we have some really incredible towns right outside of the city including many towns that are located right on the Massachusetts coastline. I mean, they're beautiful communities. 
This was all things to mention so that you could keep them in mind, but none of this is unmanageable. Frankly, our city's awesome. I hope you found some value in this video. Whether you're looking to buy a new home and move to Boston in the next nine days or 90, be sure to give me a call or shoot me an email. All of my contact information is in that description below. I'd love to chat with you, get to know you a little bit better, and find out more about your real estate goals and ultimately what you're looking to accomplish. Let me know if you have any questions, and until next time.